This interview was made possible as a podcast on the Valder BB Show by the Food IQ Girls, Sandra Hart and Valder BB. We are elevating your IQ for a healthier today and tomorrow. Like us on Facebook at the Food IQ Girls and elevate your health, wellness, lifestyle, and food IQ. I've got Audrey Lupicella. She's going to talk about her book, and it's based on the book of Acts. Impartial is about, like I said, first 10 chapters of Acts, um, and it's really a deep dive into those chapters. It's really a, it just looks at the time when God relishes his church, um, when he sent Christ. It was to fulfill all of the prophecies that led up to that point about the coming Messiah. And these first 10 chapters of Acts look at that time when he relished that was fulfilled through the prophecies through Jesus Christ. And so it culminates um, with chapter 10 when God calls the rest of the nations. It's chapter 10 ends with Peter finding out and figuring out finally that the gospel is for everybody. And that's why the book is called Impartial, um, because it is calling all those people to him. God is an impartial God who calls every nation, every tongue. All of those labels that we give each other are nullified through the cross, and that is the focus of this book. I did read some of your book. I didn't get through all of it. And the reason why I I likened it to what's going on with the deportation of citizens or undocumented people, let me change the word, undocumented people in the United States right now, your book looks at the whole of people. And I don't think in that situation, we're looking at the whole of people. We want to look at this person is a, is a felon or a crook or something like that. Mm -hmm. But in your book, you, you looked at all of us. Tell me why was, why was acts one through 10 so important? I think, um, when, like you said, we as human beings, we characterize and label people and put them in boxes um, whether we're judging them based on, like you said, their ethnicity, on where they come from, what language they speak, their color, their, um, their past. We, we innately make judgments. That's how we categorize and that's how we understand the world around us. The problem is when we do that, we shortchange people. We then associate them with certain things instead of seeing them as made in the image of God, as being a child of God, as someone that God created as a masterpiece who is, has these innate dignity that God has given them. And so we, we tend to miss that when we put these people in boxes. And so looking at Acts 1 through 10, that's exactly what it's about. It's the Jews in this time, they thought the Messiah was for the Jews. But then we see God preparing them through the first 10 chapters to open their minds to understand that it's not just for the Jews. Yes, he came for them first. But then, like Jesus said in the Great Commission in Matthew 28, go, go and take my message to all peoples, all nations, all tongues, because they are all made in God's image, and God loves them immeasurably. And he desires that relationship with them. He doesn't put them in boxes like we do. He doesn't see them for, based on the outward appearances. He sees the masterpiece that he made. And so in today's culture where we are so labeling each other is such a hot topic. And it is such a cause of a lot of heartache, a lot of division. This book looks at why that is wrong. And instead, how can we see each other as being the only label that matters if you are a child of God? Why? The only thing that matters is you are made in his image. How did this impact you so much to write this? Well, I was a single mother. I um, had my son when I was 16 years old, the, the summer after my junior year in high school. And so I was judged a lot on that. I had a lot of, um, to be fair, I had my family and my church supported me in the most amazing way. They were the reason I was able to go and finish college, to finish high school, let alone finish college as well, and to be successful 
in my endeavors because they were so supportive and they did not label me. That's where I felt God's love really and understood what it meant to be a Christian for the first time. And so on the other side of that, the P- there were plenty of others who did judge me on that, who did the first thing they saw was single mother, and from then on, that's what I was. There was nothing else. That was the label that I, they had tagged me, and that's how I was treated from that point on. And so having been through that, I understand how painful it is when we do put people in boxes and how those labels can affect your life. And then on the other side, what does it look like when we, we forego those labels and treat the person with dignity and love, how life-changing that is. That is. And that is to what we are called as Christians. When you write a book like this, what kind of faith do you have? Oh, goodness. Well, you know, it's funny. I thought I was a very, I had just gone through seminary. I wrote this book as um, a thesis-type project to finish my master's program. I knew God. I had a working faith. But I will tell you, writing this book challenged my faith in the most amazing ways. Um, I was, I had to pray my way to this book. God opened my eyes in so many ways. Um, In the writing of the book, it challenged my belief. What do I think about God? What do I think about others? How am I stereotyping both? I heard God tell me over and over and over, stop putting me in a box. This and is, he says the same about people. He says the same thing about people. Today, my guest is the author of Impartial, Audrey Lupicella. Audrey, let me ask you one more question. Uh, uh, spiritual question. I want my audience to be inspired by your by your faith and, and your belief and things like this. We have faith a lot of times until something happens to us. Mm. Okay, we mm-hmm. have faith and, you know, our friends come and say, you know, this happened and we say, you know, just have faith, just hold on, God's going to be there. But when mm-hmm. it happens to us, our faith is not that, that strong is even the advice that we gave. How mm-hmm. do you have faith in a faith of, a face of challenges to your faith? And that's something I'd really like people to hear this morning. And the reason why I'm asking you that is you t- you you told me you had a child at a time where people it was bad to have a child out of wedlock, mm-hmm. and 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 they said bad things about you know those people mm-hmm. that did that. So that means you've 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 weathered the storm. How do you mm-hmm. have faith when it's your turn? to show your faith? When I was going through that, I was not a Christian. I was not living a Christ-filled life. God used that to bring me to Him. Um, In answer to your question, I would look towards four years ago, my father died unexpectedly. And that is what challenged my faith in ways that I had never experienced. It was totally unexpected. And um, what I would say is, honey, you got to hold on. you got to hold on. Because when we hold on to God in those moments, when we cling to Him and say, I don't know why, I, I don't understand, but you got to make this right. you got to find a way to make this good somehow. The only thing we have in those moments And when we do that, when we cling to him during those times, because that's all we have left, when we cling to him, we get to see him work in the most tangible, the most amazing ways. And that is what really solidified my faith. I got to see God do miracles upon miracles during that time. I got to see I got to feel God so tangibly in a way that I have never felt him before. And I have seen him work good out of it. There, I can't imagine being able to say, where else do you get to say, God used this death of the most 
special person in my life and brought good out of it. He's the only one that is able to do that. But we have to hold on to him long enough to see the blessings. When we give up on our faith because of the bad things, we miss out on so much. And if we could just hold on, we just dive into the scriptures and we say, God, you promised to work this for good. God, you promised that you have only good in store for me. Do it. He promised you these things. You have to cling to them and then remind him, this is what you said. Prove it. And he will. But you got to hold on long enough. I hear the truth of your soul. Thank you for sharing that. And I'm going to ask you this final question. What is the best thing about impartial? Oh, goodness. Well, I know it's from hard. the people who have read it. Oh, yes. Well, I mean, I guess it depends. I'm a nerd. I am a nerd at heart. Oh, my goodness. And for me, a Bible study, I want to learn. I want to learn about it. I want to learn who God is. I want to learn what the text means. And so if you're a nerd like I am, that is definitely one of them. I think the most powerful thing that I've seen through this study, through the people that have come back and told me, I have heard so many stories, God is working in people's lives because this challenges them to pray, to have faith. One of the main theme of this book is the act of miracles, how God is working the miracles in the pages of Acts and then showing how he is also working them in our lives as well. And so it challenges in the beginning the reader to keep a prayer journal and to ask these big things of God in these moments that uh, through the journey of Acts through impartial. And I have heard God work in so many situations over and over and over, answering these prayers in incredible ways because it is challenging people to believe him, to believe that he's faithful, to believe that he's sovereign and that he's good and all-powerful. And when we go there, when we allow ourselves to believe that God is good and faithful and sovereign and powerful and ask these big things of him, we get to watch when he works. And so that, I think, for me and, and for many that have, have told me, that is the best thing. Faith is exploding because God is truly at work when we allow him to be. He is. He's at work today in our conversation. My soul feels it, and I hope you as my audience feels it. And I'd love for someone to have the opportunity to get a copy. And if you go to our Facebook page, Valder BB Show, and when you see the uh, book icon for Impartial and like it, I'm going to choose a couple of people and I will send you the book. But if you don't get the book, don't be disheartened. Audrey, where can they get the book? You can find it on Amazon. You can find it on Westbo Press. You can find it on Barn. Um, I've seen it all over the place. I don't think you'll have any issues if you just Google it. Find it. Audrey Lupicella, thank you for being my guest today. I really appreciate it.